Thanks for coming to listen a little about Fox Robotics. So I'm talking about self-driving forklifts today, which uh, is a new technology that we're going to see a lot more of in the next few years. See if a video play. Yes. So uh, Fox Robotics has been around for about four years, but I've been working in robotics for the last 22 years. Uh, I actually started out doing self-driving cars way back before it was cool uh, for the Urban Challenge. And I've been very disappointed by how long it's taken to turn that into our products. And so I spent the last 20 years trying to find use cases where we could take modern robotics and modern machine learning and actually deploy them in the real world in a useful use case. There's very, there's very few useful and intelligent robots in the world. And that's our mission at Fox, is to make useful and intelligent robots. And after trying and failing to do this at Bosch and at Google and at KUKA, I came to the sad realization it had to be a new company um, that would have the right talent, the right customers, the right uh, technology to make this real. And so after going through that process, we made Fox Robotics and we focused on automated forklifts, and in particular, trailer unloading. So I know you may have heard earlier um, Phantom Auto's presentation. They said, this is impossible. No one can do this, so we have to do remote operations. Um, but we think it's possible, and we think we can solve it. We, what we do is we take um, the self-driving car technology, modern machine learning, and modern navigation, and we put on a forklift, and we do everything on the fly. So what you see here on the top left, uh, this is our vision system. So we have a camera in between the forks, it can drive around and see where all the pallets are. It knows what type of pallet is. It can reason about plastic. So it can actually go through plastic and pick up a pallet that's covered uh, regardless. And it can go into a trailer that's never seen before and know where all the pallets are and plan to pick them up. And then our navigation system is also very flexible. It does everything on the fly as well. So typically in AGV, all this would be memorized, right? They'd come in, they'd do a mapping phase, they'd draw every route by hand or they'd drive it and they'd memorize it. They'd go and they'd draw every place in your uh, blueprint about where they want the pallets to go, and they'd memorize it. We don't do any memorization. It takes an hour to install our forklift. We get up and running, and um, it does all that on the fly instead of having to do it manually, uh, like in a six-week install stage. We can do that in a single day. So that's, um, this is our application. We, we chose the most difficult of the pallet motions to force ourselves to be as flexible as possible. And we stay focused on trailer unloading, uh, but we'll be doing more very soon. Um, so this is just now take, starting to tick off a little bit. We released our first product early last year and spent the summer piloting with a few key large customers. And just as of Q4, they've started expanding um, to new sites. So we are now at uh, 10 production sites. There's one down here that we just installed last week that's still missing. Um, and because we're so flexible, we can install very quickly. So almost all of our 10 sites were installed in the last quarter. And so we expect this year to be able to do four or five times that many sites. Um, we use a standard counterbalance electric three-wheel forklift. Uh, we don't retrofit existing forklifts. We buy new ones uh, from, now we're actually using a young Heinrich designed forklift that Mitsubishi sells in the US under Logis Next or Unicarriers. Um, they build them down in Houston, they ship them up to us, we're in Austin, Texas. We retrofit them with our stuff and then we sell or rent them out to customers directly. Um, like I said, one of our key features that we can install quickly this isn't a large $50 million automation project that you plan for six months or a year and then try it out. Um, we can send you a forklift, get it set up in a day. You can try it for a couple of weeks. If it works, you can buy it. If not, you can send it back. And if you buy one, it's easy to add two or three or four to the same site. Uh, we unload about 25 pallets an hour. Uh, we're not as fast as humans at unloading. Humans are a really fast human will do 60 pallets an hour, but that's scary fast. Um, most humans do 30 to 35 pallets an hour. So we're a bit slower, um, but we're a lot cheaper operational, operationally. Uh, we don't require any IT or WS integration. Because we are at the edge of the dock, we unload before your WMS system knows about the, about the cargo. So uh, we don't have to do an integration step, right? We can just integrate physically without having to do any IT or networking. So you don't have to have your IT do a security sign up on our equipment, which speeds things up. And because we're just using a standard uh, forklift, it has a 2,000 pound payload. We can do a 4,000 pound payload, but no one's needed that yet. Um, so I'll brag a little bit about technology. So we use uh, deep learning-based vision. So like I said, I've been in robotics for about 20 years. I was a computer vision expert. Uh, computer vision did not work until about five or six years ago. Uh, but finally, it does work. And it really opens up a whole new set of capabilities. Uh, we have a much better model of the environment now. And so we can reason about it um, and do a lot more automated than we could before. Um, we've collected something like 170,000 pallet moves now. 
And that all feeds into our, our learning system. Uh, we have our own internal labeling team, which goes through and labels our palettes. It labels where the palette is, where the pockets are. It labels if the load is stable. It labels what type of palette it is. And all of this goes into our big pile of data that we then feed into our machine learning algorithms so our robots can do the same things on the fly. Um, and this means we can handle block palettes, we can handle whitewood palettes, we can handle um, IGPS plastic palettes, we can handle Euro palettes, um, because it just takes us like a week or two to handle a new type of palette from the perception side. Um, let's see. So the main advantages, obviously, for automated uh, forklifts is <laughs> we can help with the labor shortage. You, if you are in warehouses, you know that it's really hard to hire labor. It's hard to train them, it's hard to retain them. Um, we can take your current operators, train them how to use a forklift, and make them two or three times more productive than they currently are. Uh, it's much safer. As has been mentioned a couple of times, forklifts are probably the most dangerous piece of equipment in warehousing. Um, there's lots of injuries every year. Um, we don't yet have a, a we don't, we're collecting more data, and I expect that we'll have a much lower injury rate by a couple of factors uh, than current human drivers are. Um, there's a couple of reasons why. One is we have full 360 coverage. We have three safety LIDAR around the base of the, the base of the forklift. And just interesting note, we have higher safety standards than these automated trucks do. Um, so we are, yeah, so we are very safe, and we've had no injuries in 170,000 moves so far. Uh, nothing even close to an injury. Um, and then of course, um, we are, we show up to work every single day. Um, so we can be reliable. Um, so, Humans are very much a part of the equation when you deploy these forklifts. Uh, we still rely on them for doing things that we can't do via the hardware. So we think more about this as taking your existing workforce and multiplying their, their productivity. So for example, some things we cannot do yet is we don't open trailers, we don't remove load bars, we don't remove airbags, and so we rely on a human doing those tasks alongside of us. Um, and because of that, we also have to operate safely around other forklifts and other people. Uh, it's a dual mode system. If the autonomy gets stuck for whatever reason, you can hop on, switch it to manual mode, complete the task, hop back off, and it'll pick it back up where you left it. Um, you can also use it as a standard three wheel, uh, as a standard uh, forklift throughout your system. The hardware is very general purpose. It can do unload, it can do load, it can do put away. And as we develop those applications in the software, the hardware we sell today will gain those capabilities in the future. So if you buy a self-driving forklift today, it, today, today it will unload your trailer. In a few months, it'll load it, and next year, it'll do put away for you. Uh, let's see what else. We handle all the common situations you might anticipate. Um, double stacked pallets, uh, stringers, blocks. Um, we've seen, like I said, we've seen, we've seen a lot of pallets at this point, and um, have dealt with most of the edge cases that have come up. Um, this is a typical deployment timeline. Uh, we will uh, ship you the robot, we'll show up the first day, we'll install it, it happens very quickly. Um, we'll spend the first couple of days working with your operations team to make sure the workflow matches. Uh, sometimes the workflow has to be adjusted to match the rate of the robot to the rate of your system. Um, and then most of the time we spend is just training your staff how to use the robot. And this takes one to three weeks depending on how complex the installation is. Um, and then we leave. And then you have a robot that's working for you. And yeah, that's it. That's Fox Robotics. Thank you very much.